Hi there, Aries, and welcome back to Star Lord is Tarot. This is your tarot forecast for the month of November 2021. I went ahead, shuffled the cards, laid them all out in the monthly format. So let's get to your reading, Aries. First up, for your overall energy for the month, you have the Six of Pentacles in the upright position. Six of Pentacles points to an air of generosity. Now, remember, keep in mind that... <laughs> energies can go both ways. So this could be a case of where someone is counting on your generosity during this time, or it could be that you are counting on someone else's generosity. And if that's the case, it looks like, you know, fairness, balance, equality could be a part of your everyday life in November. Hopefully that is true. Uh, we all could use some fairness and equality. Um, definitely good news for those of you who, you know, where you were in a partnership or a relationship or a situation where the balance was sort of off. It could be that now it returns in the month of November. Um, so things are pretty copacetic, as they say. Um, also, too, it could be about finances. It is pentacles after all. So it could be about uh, a big yes card for those of you who need extra finances, perhaps from a generous family member, friend, or something like that. Or it could be um, from a bank if you need to get a bank loan for, you know, a mortgage, purchase uh, a car, or just consolidate, you know, whatever it is you need. Or sometimes we need to borrow money for events such as, you know, a wedding or um, even a trip. Whatever it is, it just seems like this month is going to be pretty balanced for you, uh, Aries. We're going to take it week by week now. In week number one, we have the Five of Swords in the reverse, rooted down by Major Arcana the Fool. So the Five of Swords in the upright can point to, um, you know, infighting. Sometimes it can even represent uh, internal battles where, you know, we're at war with ourselves between, you know, battling the heart versus the head or we're of two minds of something. And sometimes it can represent being involved in a battle, a big scrimmage that's going on between, you know, neighbors, family, friends, co-workers, what have you when it's in the upright position. When it is reversed, however, this could indicate that the battle is over, whether it was an internal battle or whether it was a battle raging amongst others. You know, it, it, in the Five of Swords, this is a battle that's going on between two people. It's not one person just attacking you. This is your involvement in it as well. So it points back to the Four of Swords in the upright position, which can sometimes represent a little bit of a period of healing. So perhaps in the beginning of November, that's what you're going through. And it's a good thing because as Aries loves new adventures, <laughs> your rooted down card is Major Arcana the Fool. This is making a clean slate if there was issues before or, you know, you were battling yourself over something. The, the situation is resolved and it's like you've resolved yourself to have a clean slate. And now you're ready to move on to something else, something different. You want to move in perhaps a completely different direction. Could be, especially if it was a case of, you know, there was a lot of infighting at work going on or in your career. And now you're just like, ah, it's not worth it anymore. I'm just going to take a time out. I'm going to heal from the situation. And now I'm going to start fresh, maybe start a new career, a new job or something like that and move forward. So there was something similar. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, you guys got it in the weekly, the first week of uh, November. So the fool was there too. So in week two, now we have the King of Cups in the upright, rooted down by Major Arcana Temperance. So the King of Cups is a court card, could be representing a person. If it's representing a person, this is water energy, Cancer, Scorpio, Pisces, sun, moon, arising, male or female. Um, this could be anybody in cl close to you. This could represent your partner. This could represent your, you know, significant other, your boyfriend, girlfriend, um, or your uh, family member, your boss, or somebody you're dealing with, somebody you're close to. Or it could just, the King of Cups is also someone who's just really run the gauntlet on emotions, knows how to keep emotions in check, understands how, because this person has um, reached a level of emotional maturity. 
that takes kind of like a lifetime to reach. So it can sometimes represent, um, say, a counselor. Maybe some of you are speaking with a counselor or somebody who's very understanding about your situation. Um, this could be somebody you're leaning on. This could be maybe, you know, a sibling or, or a father or mother or something like that that is very understanding, perhaps helping you to sort of work through your emotional situation, or you could be doing that for someone else. And it's rooted down here by temperance in the upright Sagittarius energy. The temperance is very beautiful energy. It's very calming, very healing, as well as um, it represents sort of like that cooperation aspect of things. So if some of you are moving on, say, to a new job, it could be that you're going to be fitting in, you're going to be blending very well in the new position or the new job. That's good news for those of you. Maybe the King of Cups is representing a new boss and this boss is very understanding. Um, very King of Cups kind of energy, very emotional, but, you know, keeps everything on the down low in terms of, like the King of Cups is a little bit different from the Queen of Cups in the sense that King of Cups is sort of like the quiet, silent type, but you just know that, you know, you can count on them. So if that's your boss, that's very, you know, very nice. Temperance is, you're fitting in very well there. Good news for those of you in week two that have to put together some type of social event, um, maybe for the family, for work situation or what have you. It looks like things will be go re going really well because the people you will be working with, if it's a, a family event, perhaps this is... Um, you know, putting together so you're going to have the cooperation of the people who are working with you to make this all happen. And if it's a work situation, the people you're working with will. So very nice there. Moving on to week three, we now have the Ten of Cups in the reverse position, rooted down by the Two of Pentacles upright. So the Ten of Pentacles in the upright position, this is no, mainly known as sort of family energy. It's known for um, you know, having that sort of emotional peak experience. It could be where we're, you know, getting together, it could be a wedding or it could be a family event or something like that. And when it's in the upright position, everything goes beautiful. It's funny because in week two, it looks like someone's planning to put something together like that. But in week three, we have the Ten of Cups. The only thing is it's in the reverse position. So um, this could represent, it's still very good because even at its worst, it points back to the Nine of Cups in the upright. So very, very nice energy. Um, and it could just represent that maybe there's a little bit, you know, where you know, you go to an event and everything's really good, but maybe something's missing. It could be somebody couldn't be there, or couldn't show up or what have you. So there's a little bit of a sad feeling or maybe a feeling of missing someone who's not available or not there. Um, anything from that or to maybe you just feel like the Nine of Cups, it's funny because Ten of Cups is celebrating with others. The Nine of Cups is about that sort of celebrating with uh, ourselves, you know, celebrating ourselves, sort of, so to speak. So maybe for some of you, the, uh, the crowd thing in uh, week three is not really doing it for you. Maybe you just, you know, you're not really all there emotionally. Something could be on your mind. But the Two of Pentacles rooting it down indicates that there's harmony in the midst of change here. So whatever's going on, you're able to, typical Aries, you're able to carry the load, you're able to do what you need to do and to, you know, get through, it. say this, let's just use the example that this is a, a family event. This is like Thanksgiving or something like that. And everybody's, you know, the, the first part, the preparation and everything goes really well. But when the event actually happens, there could be, something going on that there's a little bit of a damper there. Like I said, maybe, you know, this is you going to your family's thing and perhaps your husband was supposed to be with you, but they have to work and they can't be there and you're missing them. There's like something like that. Or maybe you'd hope somebody would have been able to fly in for the event and they can't. So could be a situation like that, but you make it work with the Two of Pentacles. This is harmony in the midst of change, just getting everything going and, and keeping it all afloat. So, but it's still very good. The Nine of Cups in the upright, which is underneath the Ten of Cups reversed, indicates that's the wish card. This is where, you know, uh, still celebrating, you know, could be not celebrating with your, you know, your loved one, but you're still celebrating and could be still <laughs> enjoying yourself immensely. And then in week four, we have the Nine of Pentacles here in the upright, rooted down by the Queen of Wands. <coughs> 
Now, it's interesting. You've got uh, a few pentacles here. It could be financial situations uh, to deal with, perhaps, for some of you. Nine of Pentacles is good. This is a strong, independent person card. So we're able to, you know, look after our situation. Finances are okay. They're stable. You know, this is the most stable energy that you can have in the, uh, in the uh, Pentacles group. The Ten of Pentacles is a little bit different because that's more, again, involving other people. But the Nine of Pentacles is more that independent. Could be that we landed a job. Maybe it's not paying, you know, a large amount or what we used to get paid or something like that. But it's still sufficient. We're still able to look after it. It's also indicating an independent streak. Somebody may be, you know reaching out to you or something and you could be sort of cutting them off because you're like trying to be extremely independent in this situation and the rooted down is the queen of wands look at you showing up in your own reading in the upright position nice you're on the right path here at the end of the month queen of wands is real go get getter this is somebody who gets things going gets things moving um, could be that maybe because you end the month with the Nine of Pentacles, maybe some of you overspent a little bit for this event, wedding or what have, whatever's going on here, or even new venture, maybe work adventure, business venture. And now you're sitting at that Nine of Pentacles, you're like, okay, I'm in a good spot, but it could be that this is your goals now because... Uh, Aries are constantly uh, setting goals for themselves <laughs> and they don't let any grass grow under their feet. So it could be you're like, yeah, okay, at least I stabilize this, whatever's going on here. I've got this going into the month of December. I'm happy with that. But I have a feeling that Aries wants to get on the move to maybe, uh, you know, go after that Ten of Pentacles now that you've reached the Nine of Pentacles, if that makes sense. And in closing, I always pull the... Um, Two cards from the astrology deck. One is for love and romance, and the second is for career and finance. So let's see what I have for Aries in the love and romance card here. We have Leo, joy. So it could be that maybe uh, the Leo is a love interest for you, or it could be that something significant happens when the moon is in leo in the month of november or it could be a leo introduces you to the love of your life now the second card is for career and finance so we'll see what's happening there we have moon in taurus self-esteem moon in taurus so again could be uh taurus is assisting you taurus could be your uh new boss it could be your um uh, a financial person, a financial advisor, maybe because we did talk about the possibility of, of loans and so forth with the Six of Pentacles. So it could be, you know, a financial advisor. It could be something significant happens in your career or with your finances when the moon is in Taurus. So that's what I have for you, Aries, for the month of November. Thank you very much for joining me. I really hope the reading was uh, it was good for you and that um, it helped you. And if it did, please feel free to like, share, and subscribe, and I will see you next time. Bye-bye for now.